Hey, welcome everybody. Um, I, my name is Sivan Import. I am the president of Naheep Society along with Sammy, my co-president, and also on the Israel Club Board. This event was co-sponsored by the Israel Club Board, the Naheep Society, and the Career Center. And we are so, so excited to welcome Miss Allison Levine Spicer. Spicer, it's okay. Spicer, okay. Uh, she has been working with, as an, sorry, she has been working as an employment advisor with Nefesh Benefesh for just over three years. In her work as an employment advisor, she guides people through the process of exploring jobs and careers in Israel, whether they are moving to Israel next month, next year, or at some point in general on the horizon. Prior to working at Nefesh Benefesh, she worked as an educator at the Ben Gurion Heritage Center. Allison made Aliyah from New Jersey and has lived in Israel for the past 11 years and she's really cool and we're so excited and we also want to thank Ali Robinson for her tech support. Um, she's been really great and we can't wait. Thank you so much Sivan and thank you to everybody who made uh, this evening possible. I'm really excited to, uh, to be here with you guys. Um, and I really wanna stay, uh, start off by saying, this is not going to be comprehensive. This is not going to answer all of your questions. Uh, I could sit here from now until next week and still not get through all your questions. And I actually hope that this presentation leaves you with, with uh, lots of answers, but also lots of new questions uh, to keep you um, moving forward. I want to say mazel tov on taking this step uh, towards Aliyah. I'm, I'm a big planner. Uh, I believe in, in planning and a plan B and a plan C and what ifs. I'm, I'm a big believer in that even if none of that ever happens the way you think it will, but I think that there's value in going through the motions and playing things out and exploring things. So the fact that you are here for this conversation, I just wanna give you, you know, a pat on the back uh, because I think that it's, uh, it's really important. Um, so what are we going to be uh, talking about uh, today? Um, we're gonna be going through a couple of things related to employment because that's the, the focus of tonight's topic, talking about career planning, jobs, uh, employment, how do I make a living, uh, and, and end up in Israel. So we're going to be looking at planning. What can you be doing at this point in the game? Uh, we're going to talk about research. We're going to talk about networking, uh, making a living. I called it uh, money, 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 uh, timelines, and careers. All right, so let's go. Planning. All right, so what if you say, you know, that um, I'm really far away from making Aliyah? Um, in the chat box, I'd love for you to uh, put down just a number uh, of all things being equal, you know, in your mind. Um, what, how many years do you think it'll be from today, um, October 2020, until you get on that plane and make Aliyah? You don't have to participate if you don't want to share. But go ahead and, uh, and jot a number down in uh, the chat box. And I'll take this opportunity to uh, let everybody know that if I don't get to all the questions that you had coming into this presentation, um, my uh, email address is at the end. Um, Ali can also share it in the chat box if that'll be helpful uh, to you. It's basically employment at nbn.org.il, and I'm happy to discuss your, your individual situation. Okay, so we have uh, a, a decent range of numbers here from, you know, very close, one and a half, two, three, uh, two to seven, that's very uh, decent range, 10, uh, thanks, uh, 613, I hope uh, sooner. Um, so yeah, everybody here is, is looking at a little bit of a different uh, timeline, and uh, I think that it's important to to remember that you know your timeline can change uh, as as things move forward for you. 
Um, I think it is important to be realistic, but also not just to pick a number randomly. Like, like if, you're, if you're having a plan, have a plan. Why did you pick that number? What are you looking to accomplish first? Um, you know, people say to me, uh, how can I talk about a career in Israel when, when they're still not sure what they wanna do? Uh, when they grow up, honestly, I'm, I'm about to turn 40 and I still have no idea what I want to be when I grow up. I've had a whole bunch of careers, um, but I knew that I wanted to move to Israel and, and here I am. Um, I, I have conversations with people who are not sure that they want to make Aliyah and I'm, and I'm not here to tell you you must make Aliyah. Um, but I do think it is easier to, to make that decision when you're well informed. Uh, when you've at least planned for the possibility. If I want to make Aliyah, you know, what could a career path look like for me? What are some jobs that exist for me uh, in Israel? And, uh, and the last thing that I wanted to mention here about the planning is, is something that, that I'm sure that you're discussing with your, with your friends, with your, with your parents, uh, with your extended family, is, is how to make a good living uh, in Israel. And, and we'll come back to that. Um, so what can you be doing at this point? We, we threw out a whole lot of uh, numbers. Uh, nobody who's on this call is, is making Aliyah tomorrow. So this, this is a planning process. So first of all, you know, it is, it is obviously too far away to be applying for jobs. You guys are still in school. You're not up to that. But what can you be doing at this point? Uh, you can be doing research. Uh, if you're in college and, and you're working hard, hopefully you're already doing a lot of research in whatever subject you're studying and you can add uh, researching Aliyah. I can tell you from, from my personal story that from, from when I decided that I was going to make Aliyah, I was constantly doing research, obviously about what I could do for a living, but also communities and lifestyle and poet part of the country. I had notebooks and notebooks. This was back in the day where we still had notebooks, um, not just computers. And I was constantly researching different aspects to the extent that when we finally made Aliyah, I had so much free time all of a sudden because I wasn't doing this research towards making Aliyah. And this research can start today for you. You can start by something really simple, just adding it to your weekly schedule. Read the news, read what's going on in Israel. I'm not just talking about politics and I'm not just talking about where Corona is uh, in Israel today, but um, I, I put up a, a few papers, two out of the three of those are in English. Uh, and it's a great way to follow uh, news in terms of uh, mergers, acquisitions, tech, business, uh, new developments in, in medicine. It's, it's a great way to stay current. I'm sorry, I went back ahead of page. Um, I saw a great documentary one time about uh, developers skimming reviews on Amazon products. They would go onto Amazon and read all the reviews on uh, Amazon products. Like this product is great, except I wish it did this, or this product is great, except it, it has this problem. And they would actually take all these feedbacks uh, that, they, that they were reading and use that as their base uh, in terms of what to build their, how to build their next product, what, what problems their next product should address. I encourage you to use job boards. Uh, Nefesh Benefesh has a great job board. There are many others out there. You can go onto the Nefesh Benefesh site to find more. You can email me, but put that aside for a second. You can use the job boards as a way to do research, figuring out what different positions look like in Israel. Does a special ed teacher have the same responsibilities? Does a social worker, does um, a Java programmer, if we're talking about a, a marketing manager in New York versus a marketing manager in Tel Aviv, is it the same job description, same responsibility, same understanding of what that title means? So you can start to look at what skills are in demand. You can start to look at what jobs interest you. Um, you can start to understand what the differences are because maybe something uh, is, is, is a little bit different or requires a little bit of a different skill set uh, in Israel than uh, in the States. Also, uh, I think uh, you know, a bunch of you are probably, I'm just guessing, studying 
accounting, maybe law or medicine or um, you know teaching, you should, even if you're years away from getting there, start to understand what your path is going to look like. Uh, will you need to have your degrees recognized? Will you need to have things translated? Will you need to keep copies of your transcripts? Um, I know that if right now somebody asked me for copies of my transcript from when I finished college, it would be a real pain for me to go deal with that, with me sitting in Israel. Even with the age of technology that we're in, a lot of things are still done by um, mail requests. A lot of things are still done by you know, calling, calling up somebody, finding the right office. Um, it's easier just to get all your ducks in a row, all your paperwork as you finish degrees, have an understanding of, like, let's say you're going to go study medicine. Um, you, you finish your, your, your degrees, your residency, your internship. Okay, but what paper trail do you need along the way? What is your licensing and certification process going to look like when you get to Israel? Is it something that you're going to really work on right now? Absolutely not. However, um, I think it's a good idea always to know what awaits you. I think it's a good idea to know what kind of a process uh, you're going to have to go through. So, so be aware, do your research, um, know a little bit in terms of what you're going to be getting yourself into. And uh, a great way to do that is you can go onto the Nefesh Benefesh website. Um, there is a professions index. And you can use the drop down menu and really look at uh, hundreds of different jobs that might interest you, that might help you in terms of your choice of degrees or concentration or certifications or, or direction. Um, uh, sometimes uh, reading things like this will help you eliminate uh, options for yourself. There's also plenty of interviews when you click on the individual um, job title, you'll find interviews with people who made Aliyah, who are in those positions. What does their path look like? Uh, do you need Hebrew for your job, etc.? Do research, uh, have, a, have a good understanding. Don't assume, don't, don't uh, you know, oh, I heard from a friend or my, my father's uncle's cousin's husband um, made Aliyah and he's um, in tourism. So I know all about tourism because I heard from one person. Um, so don't, don't, uh, don't lock yourself into just, you know, having heard from one person now, you know, uh, you know, everything. Do your research, do your research, do your homework. Networking. What is networking? What does that mean? Uh, why am I networking now? Uh, first of all, the, the biggest rule of networking is to build your network way before you need it. Um, make sure that you are making good, positive connections with people, uh, picking people's brains. Um, a good way to, to do that is to use LinkedIn. And, and, I, and I wrote here rather than just being on LinkedIn. Um, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. Um, I know a lot of you guys, still as students, probably don't have so much of a reason to be on LinkedIn. Um, but you, it's free. Uh, there's no reason not to be on LinkedIn. Now, this is just being on LinkedIn. It's a, it's a way, for those of you not familiar, it's a way to create a profile. It's kind of like an online resume, but uh, it's uh, also a networking opportunity. LinkedIn is really big in Israel. Uh, as a tool. There are jobs posted on LinkedIn. Um, a lot of connections are made that way. And when I say using LinkedIn, what I would encourage you to do is search out people who look like you in four years, five years, six years in Israel. If you're looking to be uh, a marketing director in Israel, if you're looking to be um, you know, a, a, a chemical engineer in Israel, if you're looking to be a uh, special ed teacher in Israel, type in a job title that you would want to have and, and do a search by Israel. And people will come up first, uh, people who are more closely connected to you. So maybe a friend uh, of somebody who's on LinkedIn, that'll come up first. There's not gonna be a whole LinkedIn uh, session, but it is worth taking a minute to, to talk about. 
and you can reach out to people who are your future peers and say, hey, um, my name is Javi and I'm thinking of making Aliyah in a couple of years and I'm really interested in your field. Can you give me some pointers? What do you read? Uh, where do you follow news? Where did you find your job? What skills are up and coming? Ask questions. And people love to give out advice. Here I am sitting now giving out advice. And if you send out 50 of those, you know, over time, not all at once, you're not in a rush, you'll get a couple back, a couple people write back. And now you have a few good contacts. My favorite networking question always, and this can be about learning about communities, or when you're making social connections. My favorite networking question is who else can you put me in touch with? After you've had this conversation, after this person has gotten a chance to know you, who else should I be talking to? Who else do you know who I can talk to? Network, people will remember you, you'll establish a rapport with them, send them a once a year, you know, Chag Sameach, Shana Tova card. I guess cards are now email, guys. Um, and, and just keep in touch. But it's building the network before you need it. And then when you're looking for a job, let's say you're making Aliyah in three years, five years, six years, you've not just stayed in touch with those five original people that you reached, but all the other people and layers upon layers and upon layers. And it's good, it's good habits to get into. I hate networking. I personally hate networking. I'm not somebody who will walk into a room and start shaking hands with everybody and introducing myself, but it is a way to get ahead. It is a way to make connections. And I'm sure some of you have heard that in Israel, uh, a lot happens with protectia. With, it's, it's not necessarily what you know, it's who you know. Um, I, think, I think it's important to know a lot of stuff also. But yeah, sometimes the right connection can get you the interview. Again, if you, if you joined us a little bit late, please feel free to uh, jot some questions down in the chat. I'm not going to get to all the questions. Um, and if you have a personal uh, question or, or an individual situation that you'd like to discuss, please feel free to reach out to the email address in the, in the chat box. Money. Who here has not heard the joke? about how to make a fortune in Israel. I think we all have. You're supposed to bring a bigger fortune with you. But I think the, the bigger question is, why do you need a fortune? Who needs a fortune? I just like to pay my bills and maybe have a little bit uh, of money left over at the end of the month or not to be worried about you know, where my next uh, you know, paycheck is going to come from. We all talk about making a fortune in Israel. And I think that that adds to a lot of the pressure of, oh my gosh, I need to have a high paying career. And oh my gosh, I'm never gonna be able to, to make it. You know, um, I think that uh, before you uh, give up so easily, I think we need to ask ourselves if we're asking the right questions, um, why are we trying to make a fortune? Uh, if the goal is to make Aliyah, if the goal, is to live in Israel and have a life here and put down roots here, then yeah, it's important to have a job and it's nice to have a career. And it's, I think it's really important to do something that's personally fulfilling. But uh, I think we should all stop talking about making a fortune in Israel. Um, I will say that uh, as part of my job, I, I work with people who have not yet made Aliyah focusing on employment and career changes and resume and people once a week, I get somebody saying, okay, I'll make Aliyah if I find a job first, which is a, another issue. Um, and it has to be a job that pays just as much, if not more, as what I'm making in America. I think that's kind of sell, setting yourself up for disappointment. Does it happen sometimes that you get a job in Israel that pays more than your job paid in the States? Yes. But I think, again, we're focusing on the wrong goals. Um, we're focusing uh, on, on the, wrong, the wrong points here. Um, I think budget is really important. And just honestly, life, uh, life skills uh, uh, to, all, to all you uh, college students taking steps out into uh, you know, independence. Uh, life skills, make a budget. How much money 
do you really spend every month? How much money do you really need to be spending uh, every month? You can make uh, budgets. There's some uh, tools available on our website, but honestly, just start with the basics from where you are today. Talk to your friends, your relatives who are a couple of years ahead of you. Let's say you stay in America. Let's say you don't make Aliyah. What is your budget situation going to look like in 10 years, in 20 years? What are your expenses going to look like uh, down the road? So I think that um, you can't talk about employment and you can't talk about careers without talking about budget because everybody's always interested in, okay, how much money can I make? How much money can I make? How much money can I make? My question to you is how much money do you need to make? How much money do you need to be making in order to make ends meet and a little bit? Um, uh, I'm not gonna get into this too much, but, but I, I'll assign this to everybody for homework. Um, if you haven't been working on a, a budget for your you know, life pre alia while, while you're still in the States, uh, you should definitely do that. It's, uh, again, good life skills. And for planning ahead, for trying to really figure out what are the, what are the points that you need to be making. I'll throw that out there and, uh, and just say, not that I'm going to criticize my own slide here, but uh, it says rent uh, for five to uh, 10,000 shekel. That's also not necessarily true. I, my mortgage payment is, uh, is less than 4,000 a month, but I chose to live in a little more out of the way place in Israel. Um, and that's something to look at creatively. What, what does Aliyah mean to you? It doesn't necessarily have to be Tel Aviv, Ramat Beit Shemesh, Jerusalem. Food for thought. Timelines. Um, what does your timeline look like? Now, obviously you have some sort of a timeline in mind uh, because you were able to answer the question earlier on in terms of how many years uh, until you make Aliyah. And I think that uh, talking about graduate school goes together with talking about career and talking about uh, getting a job. Um, do you need to go to graduate school? Are your parents making you go to graduate school? Do you want to go to graduate school? Do you need to go to graduate school for your, um, for your uh, career? Um, I don't know, um, it's up to you. Um, it's, uh, it's, something to, it's something to think about. Uh, it's something to, uh, to figure out, are you going to be going to uh, graduate school in the States? Are you uh, going to consider going to graduate school in Israel? Um, in terms of uh, different career paths, it may make a difference uh, in terms of learning Hebrew, learning the system. For example, if you're a social worker, there really are pros and cons of doing graduate school in the States versus doing uh, graduate school in, uh, in Israel. I invite you to reach out to our department. Uh, we have uh, Shlomit, my colleague, who is more than happy to discuss pros and cons uh, of doing uh, school in Israel and what your options look like in Hebrew and English, getting up to speed with Hebrew. We covered paperwork uh, a little bit earlier, um, but I, I wanna emphasize that. Uh, I, uh, I'll tell you why, I just dealt with somebody uh, the other week who went to dental school at a, at a college that no longer, at an, a, a dental assistant school at a college that no longer exists. And she's having such a hard time getting all of her paperwork together and uh, getting all of her transcripts and getting all of the paperwork. So do your paperwork along the way. You're going to do uh, undergrad and then graduate school, and then you're going to do a rabbinical school, and then you're going to get a PhD. That's great. Collect your paperwork along the way. Get all your official documentation along the way so that you don't have that problem. Hebrew. Where does that fit in? Um, I know people who have lived in Israel for 20 years, 30 years, I'm sure you know some of those people who do not speak Hebrew, who live in a very English speaking uh, neighborhood, who um, uh, work in, in uh, English, 
who uh, even might do WhatsApp uh, communication with their kids' teachers in English who really manage 20, 30 years into their alia in English. It's possible. There are a lot of really good careers where you don't really need Hebrew so much. There are options, but you're always going to put yourself in a more marketable position, the better your Hebrew is. The more you can work on your Hebrew now, the better you're going to be for the long run. Um, because you never know how long that English speaking only job is going to last you. And you never know if you're going to pick up and move to a more Hebrew speaking environment uh, of the country. So if uh, you know, people ask me who are in college, I get emails, you know, what can I do now? What can I do now? You know, you have the planners who feel like they need to be doing something. I know I was that person. Work on your Hebrew, work on reading, work on speaking, whether it's finding a local Hebrew speakers club, whether it's watching TV programs uh, on YouTube, Netflix in Hebrew, um, or taking it up a notch, listening to podcasts in Hebrew in your field. Even if you're just starting to pick up little bits here and there, it's, it's something. When do you apply for a job? You know, honestly, you should really only be actually submitting, you know, I'm applying for this job one to two months before you want to start working, whatever your earliest target work start date would be. So one to two months before that. What does that mean? It means if you're making Aliyah on January 1st, January 2nd, you're going to take a, you know, a week or two to get settled. And then you're going to do Ulpan. Ulpan is a five months intensive Hebrew course, uh, five hours a day, five days a week for five months. Uh, and then only towards the end of Ulpan are you going to start looking for work. So that means you're not applying for work before you make Aliyah. It means you're not applying for jobs that early. Um, I'm, I'm happy to have a uh, conversation when you're within six months of making Aliyah in terms of making your own plan. I'm not going to get into that much detail now, but I think it's, it's good to have some sort of a timeline in mind. You're only applying for work close to when you want to start working. I'd say the exceptions to that rule would be um, doctors, maybe, maybe nurses, but really just doctors. And uh, finally, I wanted to, uh, in this, in this uh, slide, uh, answer the question uh, that I get all the time. Um, you know, I'll find a job and then I'll move to Israel. I think that people can look for work before they move to Israel. I've seen job offers happen, but again, it comes back to what is our focus and what is our goal? Because what if you do get offered that job and then you get on the plane and you move to Israel and then three months later, the job falls through. Now what? That's one thing. The other thing is, is it's kind of like, okay, I'll get married when I can afford to. I'll have a baby when I can afford to. I'll, I'll, I'll move to Israel when I can afford to. You're just, it, it, it's just never going to get to that point. Um, it is very, 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 very hard to get an employer to pay attention to you uh, before you have two feet on the ground in Israel. It's just, uh, it's just the reality. So have it in mind. You should, you should be prepared as possible. You should be ready to hit the ground running if that's what you want to do. But don't put all your eggs in the basket of I'm going to find a job and then I'm going to move to Israel because you're just holding yourself back. All right, careers. Um, what's a good job for Israel? What's not a good job for Israel? Uh, I think that this is a conversation that would go on for a long time. And at the end of the day, how much is this answer really going to help you? For example, if I say, if, if somebody asks me, you know, what should I major in in college? What's a good major uh, to, to make a lot of money in Israel? And I would say easily high tech. But if somebody said that to me when I asked that question, that's not going to help me because I'm, I'm barely holding on in terms of Zoom. I could never program you know, my oven to say the right time. I'm not gonna be a computer programmer. So that answer is not really going to help me. I think the better thing to do is to go back to research and figure out what is your skill set, What do you like to do? What are you good at? Um, what makes you happy? And pick apart the job descriptions that you see out there 
and it'll help you figure out a direction. I can give you a list of good jobs in Israel, but again, how is that going to help you? It might not help you very much. It might not help you uh, just get a list from me in terms of, okay, here are good jobs, because what do these jobs mean? What do they entail? What are, responsibilities do they have? I can tell you a very, a very silly example, being a doctor in Israel is different than being a doctor in America. When you go to the doctor's office in America, you have many layers of bureaucracy to go through before you actually see the doctor. You sign in with somebody when you first get there and then a nurse or a med tech comes to take your vitals and then maybe somebody else and then the doctor. In Israel, you might not even sign in with anybody. You swipe your card, the doctor calls you in and it's the doctor, him or herself, who's typing all the notes. So what you imagine as, as, a, as what a, a, a job might look like, what you are used to seeing is not necessarily what it is in Israel. So one, figure out what's a good job for you in Israel, not what's a good job in Israel, but what's a good job for you in Israel and uh, do your research. Uh, pick through what these, what these uh, job titles really look like. Um, and there are, you know, I, I listed a couple of things here that just jumped out at me. There are things to know about uh, before you take that leap into different fields. Um, and again, it comes back to doing research law. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that, that's an easy example. Um, if you become a lawyer and pass the bar in the States, and you want to become an Israeli lawyer, like transfer your credentials, you have like one or two classes that you need to take and then take the Israeli bar. Companies really encourage you to do that only within five years of passing the bar in the States. If you come as a 45 year old lawyer, can you work as a lawyer remotely for, uh, you know, California or, or companies based in New York, 100%. Can you use your lawyer skills in other ways, go into legal writing, consulting, different avenues? Yes. Are you going to become an Israeli lawyer? Probably not. Um, marketing. Marketing is a great field to go into if, uh, if, if your Hebrew is not so strong. Uh, a lot of times companies will hire you not just for your marketing skills, but also for uh, your English skills. Um, there are fields that are, I guess, kind of saturated in Israel or just the, the field doesn't exist. And I think that a classic example is uh, being a rabbi. Sorry, all you guys who are becoming rabbis. Um, can you find work in Israel as a rabbi? Yes, there's really no such thing as a pulpit rabbi, uh, you're just, it, it just doesn't exist in the same concept. Do you find models here and there? Yes. But the field, uh, the pool of uh, rabbis here is so many that uh, it's, it's very competitive. There are all these gap year programs that maybe some of you uh, went on yourself after high school. Um, seminaries, yeshivas, those positions don't pay a whole lot. Uh, relatively speaking, and they're extremely competitive. There are tons of rabbis who've made Aliyah looking for these positions. So a lot of rabbis tend to reinvent themselves. <coughs> I'm sorry. Political science is a major I was considering in college. It's a very uh, popular major, especially people thinking of doing stuff internationally, uh, things like that. But um, do you see Olim working in government? Yes but it's hard to break into. I'm never gonna say it's impossible. I think we can all you know, point to some examples that we've seen, it definitely happens. But um, something like that, I would encourage you to have uh, fallback plans or uh, figure out, again, what are the skills that you like to be using? Or, okay, maybe I, maybe I don't get my dream job in the government, maybe I end up working in, in, a, in a nonprofit or on a municipal level. Uh, or, you know what, that's really important to me and I'm going to focus so much on Hebrew uh, that I'm going to be in the best position possible. So again, as you're exploring different careers, uh, do that research, network, talk to people, find out exactly 
uh, the nuances between what the position looks like in the States and what it looks like in Israel, what steps you'll need to go through to get there, um, and uh, what, what your options you know, are, are on the table. Accounting, uh, also really popular. People work as accountants, as CPAs in Israel, but for dealing with US taxes. Um, so again, like, could you become an Israeli accountant? Yes, but most uh, North American Olim, uh, you know, from US and Canada who are uh, accountants don't usually travel that route. So it, so it is important to, to gain an understanding of, of what uh, are the paths that, that other people have, uh, have traveled. Salary surveys. Okay, they're out there. Um, if, uh, if you want links to salary surveys, send me an email. I'll send you a bunch of links. I always tell people to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, but there's also always a little bit of truth to it. Bottom line, it's a starting point. Uh, if you're going into a career in uh, writing uh, versus marketing, you should know what your uh, earning potential looks like. Um, by the way, in case anybody's freaking out right now, uh, these are salaries that are measured in thousands of shekels per month. Uh, in the US, we uh, count salary in uh, dollars per year. Um, so one, it goes back to what is your, it actually helps in terms of your budget. It's less math to do. What does your monthly uh, expenses look like? What does your monthly income look like? Um, and uh, these salary surveys in different positions uh, can help you gain an idea. These are obviously super simplified uh, charts. Uh, there, there are a lot of points from entry level to, uh, to the highest level, but it gives you an idea. Um, again, averages, approximate, ballpark, um, but I think that this is a, a decent way to uh, answer a lot of your questions in terms of what's a good job in Israel, uh, what's a good career to have. Uh, I, I don't know that finding what is the, the highest paying job is, uh, is, is, the best, uh, is the best way to focus on it. Again, look at what you think your expenses are going to be, what your, what your income really needs to be, uh, et cetera. All right, so, uh, so what now? Sorry, um, what now? Uh, I think that the people who succeed the most in terms of career, in terms of employment uh, in Israel are those that are the most open-minded and the most proactive. And I think that all of you certainly check the box for being proactive because you're, you're here, uh, you're having this conversation uh, now uh, when it's not quite yet relevant for you, but you're planning ahead, you're being proactive. And I encourage you to, to take that with you and uh, continue to ask people questions, continue to be a sponge uh, and get information from people and be open-minded. Uh, don't say I'm looking for only this job. It must fit in this box and it must be 10 minutes from where I live and I must make this amount of money. Be open-minded, uh, be honest with yourself. You know, what's, what's going to fulfill you? Uh, what's going to be uh, an enjoyable career path? But what's, what, what is your, your greater goal? Uh, what is your ultimate goal? And if your ultimate goal is to get to Israel and is to have a successful aliyah, um, then, then I encourage you to be as open-minded as possible as you explore uh, career paths. And I'm going to uh, put up my contact information here. Feel free to reach out to me at the employment department and either I will get back to you uh, with a question or, or somebody else uh, from my, uh, my team will be happy to get back to you. Uh, I'll try to take a few questions, but, uh, but thank you very much. It was, uh, it was great uh, being here with you guys. Hi everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. My name is Noah from the YU Israel Club 
And I would just like to thank everyone for joining tonight. I hope you all enjoyed. Also, on behalf of the YU Israel Club and everyone here who joined tonight, I would like to thank Allison from Nefesh Nefesh. So thank you, Allison, for taking your time to speak with us. We really appreciate it. Also, thank you to the Career Center, the B'nai Kiva Society, and the Israel Club for co-sponsoring this event. Um, thank you. And everyone, make sure to keep an eye out for any future events coming soon by the B'nai Kiva Society, Israel Club, uh, Career Center, and any other events. Um, anyways, I hope everyone has a good night and good luck with midterms. Thank you. All right. Um, do you guys want me to answer a few questions or? Uh... All right. Um, um, yeah. yeah. Um, what about um, the arts in Israel? Okay. So I'll answer that question a little like bit animation. more broadly. I'll answer that question a little bit more broadly. Um, if you pick any small field, the arts is a small field, uh, you know, film is a small field, uh, museums is a small field. Uh, Israel's a small country. So does it exist here? Yes. Um, but your, your pool of jobs is just going to be small. Uh, it's just going to be competitive. Uh, can you make it? I believe that you can. But um, again, coming back to what is your greater goal? If your greater goal is to move to Israel and have a successful life in Israel, are you going to pick up and move back to the States if you can't find your dream job? I, I think that's a question that, that only you can answer. So uh, again, research, uh, take a look at, at, at what does the field look like and, and have an understanding. Same thing for like, uh, you know, specialized finance, uh, programs. Um, it's, it's just, it's just a small, uh, it's just a small uh, ecosystem here. Uh, psychology and social work uh, in Israel, somebody asked, um, yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot of demands for people to work in psychology and social work, but uh, I would emphasize Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew. If you think about working as a photographer or as a chef, there's a very small amount of Hebrew that you need to be successful with uh, that kind of a career. Uh, but something like psychology and social work, are there positions that are English only? Yeah, uh, but you're just going to be able to position yourself much better uh, with Hebrew uh, in something like that. Uh, in terms of is the bar very difficult to pass in Israel? I, I don't know because I've, I've never done it myself. Uh, but I would encourage you to, to research, to speak to lawyers who have done it. Uh, but again, um, not, uh, it's, it's the path that most lawyers choose not to follow. Uh, when most people are, are choosing not to do something, it doesn't mean that I'm going to follow them, but it means that I want to know why they've all chosen to do that. So it's, it's something to keep in mind, not just in law, but, uh, but in general. All right, um, I think that's it uh, for our time, but if I did not get to your question, I encourage you to email me at employment at nbn.org.il. The, uh, the link is in the chat. Thank you so much and uh, good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Allison.